So following the MLS Next Pro Cup, what message do you have for City 2? Give us a little insight to that post-match locker room speech that probably wasn't easy to give. Well, obviously, if you make the final, you want to win it. You know, it was uh, uh, disappointing uh, when you look at the, the opportunities we had, especially in the first half. I thought we were the better team till that call came, which was, in my opinion, not necessarily a penalty. And uh, we somehow didn't really recover that well. So overall, I think uh, Columbus played a good second half. They, they, they won it in the end of the day because they had a good season. But it's not just important to reflect on this one game. I think it's, uh, that's what we try to do, to look a bit more uh, what happened the whole season. So I think uh, uh, pride is the right word. I think we can be really proud about the players. The players can be really proud of themselves. And it was a great season, to be mm -hmm. honest. You know, nobody expected us to be there where we were. Uh, not many people even saw us close to the playoffs. So in the end of the day, winning the regular season was for me the most important part to be of the 24 games, number one. Mm -hmm. And winning the Western Conference was the cherry on the top. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the massive cherry on the top, but that's fine. Yeah, we got a first trophy for the club. So successful first season, now in the books. What do these next couple months look like for City to kind of heading before the holidays hit? Yeah, we know we're still training, so the players got uh, some time off now after the final. Uh, they need to recover also mentally. It was a, it was a long season also with the playoff games. Uh, and then we still have to work, you know. We're still trying to gel the players together. We have all, a big number of MLS players which under contract next year already here. So we will still train till, till, the middle, till the middle of November. We still will have some friendly games and preparing for, for the next season. Focusing already, of course, on the drafts as well. But for the team, they still will be out there and about and will we'll work till, till the middle of November. Now looking forward, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but the recruiting process for MLS Next Pro. Will we be seeing new faces this offseason or is that something closer to 2023 that we'll see? Well, we have players who have a two-year contract, so they will come back for next season. Um, we have to make decisions now with the coaching staff um, who we try to renew, who we let go. Uh, but in general, the, the face of the team, of the face of the MLS Next Pro, the structure and also a little bit the strategy will change. So we're going to go much younger than we went this year. You know, this year was the first year we had to integrate our, our foreign players as well. So next season you can expect lots of players which coming up from our own academy system, mm -hmm. but still having a few more experienced guys around them who, who lead the Wolf Pack. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely a, a very interesting team next year where the development uh, part plays the biggest role. So the focus will be young players getting lots of minutes in a professional surrounding and getting prepared for MLS and a professional pathway. So with that, MLS Next Pro requires 24 roster spots to be filled by professional players and 11 to be filled by amateur players, correct? What is the difference between those two players and why that rule is significant in this development league? I think that's the most important rule in the league because that 11 um, non-professional players, you call it amateur players, that's the youngsters who still can play in the academy. That's the youngsters who do not uh, have a professional contract yet. Players who still keep the eligibility for the university, which is a very important part of our club. You know, we still value the education of players. Uh, we do not want to lock up our youngsters too early on a professional contract. They still should have an opportunity to actually go to some of the biggest schools in the country and, and actually yeah, get great education and finish their degrees. Uh, not everybody can become a full professional at the MLS level. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the beauty about this league, that you really can focus on development. You can mix in really, really young players and, and give them all the opportunities to show themselves, where then after that one, two seasons in this league, we need to make decisions. Um, so yeah, uh, I think the mix is exactly here, the, the most important part. And that is why the MLS Next Pro in our way of thinking, in our way of development, in our way of pathway, uh, was the perfect addition to the whole league system in the United States. Can you give us a little preview, not to give too much away, to some of these decisions or when we can expect to see them made before the 2023 MLS Next Pro season? Yeah, I mean, you know, we have lots of time now. So uh, I think for us, it's now as a club, we need to focus first on the, on the MLS team. Uh, who do we pick in the various drafts? Uh, I think the Super Draft, uh, which will be 
held on the 21st of December is also a very important part for the MLS Next Pro because uh, you're picking players who come out of university who are still very young, who maybe need that bridge uh, to become an MLS player, to play another season in the MLS Next Pro. So we will have some decisions made towards the end of the year and other decisions made early next year. But of course, uh, you know, we still want to treat the MLS Next Pro just as important as all our other parts in the league and our other parts in the club. So MLS, MLS Next Pro and MLS Next plus the community, they're all playing an equal part in our idea. Bringing guys in that you really want or want to stay, does this play a part in the decision making? and the possibilities that are here at, when you play for City 2? Great facility helps, uh, great infrastructure helps, very good coaches helping as well. So I think uh, definitely having a, you know, a great facility where I think you can, you can train and work with the players to the, to, the, to the best possible ways and going into the details always makes players uh, helping a decision and uh, actually saying, well, where can we have a better place to develop ourselves? I believe, yeah, it definitely has a, a, a very, very good impact on the player's mind. And it will help us not just to find players for the MLS Next Pro, it helps us also for the academy. And I think even at professional level, a facility like that, a stadium like this can make a difference. Now, I think I speak for all of the St. Louis fans when I say thank you for a historic, incredible, fun, inaugural MLS Next Pro season. And we really look forward to next year. Thanks for the memories, more to make next year. This is Kristen Carver, Pitch Side with Blue Fan and Steel. See you next time.